You are now on channel J squared KLMT. Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm JD from J squared KLMT, and I'm your host today for Physics the Everyday Science. Believe it or not, television uses a great deal of physics for us to enjoy everyday shows such as Law and Order and Smallville. For how it does this, we'll go to Matt. Matt? All right, thanks, JD. Well, how the television works is, at first, a, uh, electrons are basically created in this cathode as a piece of metal. They're heated at a very high temperature. Then they're shot out to, through a uh, potential difference. So they're shot through this voltage at a very high speed. And once they, uh, they'll travel through a magnetic field. And uh, as the, after they do that, they'll be deflected off of these, uh, the anodes that are inside the tube. And once, they, once they're deflected from the anodes, they basically shoot to this uh, fluorescent screen. The screen here is coated with a phosphorus coating, so once the electron hits the, um, the coating, it causes that coating to glow, and that's what we see coming through the screen. Thanks, Matt. How about you put that in terms we all understand? Well, you see, the electrons, they're formed in this the piece of metal here. Whoa! Hi, I'm Crystal. I'm here to talk about how the TV actually works. Okay, so a TV is actually work as a cathode ray tube, also known as CRT, and the electrons start here and produced by a heating metal, and um, then they are focused electromagnetically into a beam, and then it's accelerated through the potential difference, and then it comes onto the fluorescent screen. The potential difference is the amount of energy per unit charge needed to move a charged particle from one point to another in a static electric field. Gone? Oh, that's Leslie, our narrator for today. Hi. Right. So anyway, as electrons go through the potential difference, they hit the coated screen and then the energy is transferred as the electrons are making the collisions and then the collisions cause this the screen to cool. Oh yeah son it's beat you bro. I told you you can't see me. What? Oh. That's, like, that's like three times in a row man. I don't even want to play no more. Come on. I think that happens. Are you guys done yet? Yeah, the colors don't seem like bright. Yeah, man. Well, we're only seeing three colors right now. It's pretty much just basically three colors. Three colors? Yeah. Only three colors? Three colors, man. How do you figure? Because, look, we're only watching. The only colors we're seeing right now is blue, green, and red. Basically, each color has an electron going through it. The electrons, like, they're each different colors, and you see them at a slightly different point in the back of the cathode ray tube of the TV. Whoa. So, yeah, man, there's different points that the colors are being shot through the cathode ray tube. So as electrons are focused electromagnetically into a beam, they speed through a potential difference, you know? As a potential difference, the electrons go through a shadow mask. Shadow mask? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, man, the shadow mask. All right. Okay, let me break it down for you. Shadow mask mass lets three electron beams hit only specific phosphor dots on the inside of the tube's front surface. So that's how we see the different colors? After the electron beams go through the shadow mass, they hit a coated, like they hit a coated screen which is covered with phosphorus dots. So when they hit those phosphor dots, the phosphor dot ends up glowing. And that's how we see the color in the TV. What are you guys talking about? I'm just getting butt whooped by me. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> man. I lost again because of physics. That's okay. Man, I can't play video games for nothing. In Crystal's and John's explanation of how television works, there were a few terms that weren't defined. There were a lot of words that weren't defined. Mom? This is our narrator, Leslie. Now let's head back to Matt so he can define some terms that were that were left out. Holy! All right, thanks, JD. I'm gonna define some terms right now. 
All these terms? Okay, it's gonna take a while. Potential here. Um, the equation basically to find potential is what, or what potential is. It stands for the energy per unit charge of a test charge. So the energy is uh, notated here as U. And the units for this is uh, 1 joule per coulomb, which basically equals 1 volt. Um, voltage, uh, another word for that is potential difference. Um, what it is is basically the, the one point of, it's the potential from one point of potential energy to another point of potential energy. So for instance, we have a power line here. Uh, here at the top of the power line, we have a voltage of 20,000 volts. Uh, back at the ground, though, it's zero volts. So we can say that the potential uh, difference between this point and this point is 20,000 volts, uh, as we do in the equation here, where we're calculating the potential difference. Basically, equals the, the final potential minus the initial potential. So in this case, it's 20,000 volts minus the zero volts of the ground. We end up getting 20,000 volts. That's our answer. All right, that makes sense. What about the what about, what about a charged particle? Is it an electron charged particle? Right. Well, in that case, we use a different equation. Yeah. So it's always best to draw a picture. We're doing, we're going to deal with two electrons in this case. So I'm going to say we have Q over here to be the test charge, separated by a distance r from another Q. So this is positive. This is negative. And this distance will be R. So when we're dealing with this case, we both of these charges are going to have its own potential. And to find the difference, we're going to set up using a different equation. Well, first we'll use the first equation we have for potential, which is U over Q. We, we'll say Q prime in this case for the potential of this one. And then we'll set it equal to the potential of this charge. And for that, we use a different equation, K Q over R. Always eating cookies. What's up with you? Oops, screw you guys. I'm going home. You can still have it if you want. Guys, I can roll. K is a constant equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 newtons 10 meters squared per column squared. Hey, John, what happened to JD? JD, move. There's a dime here. I saw a dime. Yes! I'm rich, bitch! Nothing. What John said, K is equal to that. And then Q is just the charge of the particle. It's equal to that. And then R is the distance. And then to Q to the test charge. And the SI units are in meters. So when we're doing a problem like this, uh, it's best to draw it out at first, but say we have a charge that's t uh, radius 10 meters away from the test charge Q prime, and both the charges have the charge of 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Plug it into the uh, equation for potential, and what we find is uh, multiply the K value times the charge of the value, or, uh, the, the charge value, and then divide it by the distance. Get that? Uh, I need a calculator. <laughs>
Thanks, John. So after calculating that, we get 1.44 times 10 to the minus 10, and we're in Newton's. So here are some terms we need to find. We've got electric field and magnetic field. We need an electro an electromagnetic field to make the to focus the electron into an electro an electron beam to make it pass through. So we got the electron going through the field lines, which go from positive to negative. They run through and form a semicircle in the magnetic field. And the variable for the magnetic field, which we will know, is the know what a potential difference is in certain terms, now we can tie them all together so that you know how to actually find certain things. And for the cathode ray tube, first you know that the cathode uses an electron by heating a metal, and that electron can be focused into an electron beam by an electric magnetic field. Because that electric magnetic field can focus it, it does need to get hit the fluorescent screen here. So it goes through an anode, but before it goes through an anode, it actually has to go through a potential difference so that the electric field can focus the beams. So in order for you to know what, how to find potential difference, you actually have to have some values. And our values here, first off, you know the equation. And you know that for electrons, the charge of it, which is Q, is 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. Then let's say that we're given a, a distance from one charge to the next charge, and the radius, or the distance is going to be 15m, here. So if you plug all of your information into this problem here, you know that k has a constant of 8.99 times 10 to the ninth net, uh, newtons times meters squared c squared, or column squared. And you multiply that times this here, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs over your radius here, which is in the right SI units, 15 meters. Then when you solve for it, this should cancel out and this should cancel out, leaving only here, newtons times meters over coulombs, which is also equal to joules over coulombs. And when you get that answer, that would be your potential difference here. After that, you have your potential difference. It goes through, the beam goes through the end noise, and it's going to go through that shadow mass. That shadow mass is going to determine whether or not the beam is going to go through a red, a green, or a blue um, towards the phosphorus dots on the surface of the fluorescent screen. When they do hit whatever phosphor um, dot they have, they're going to, they're going to glow. And when they glow, that's when you're going to see that color. And it's when you have a whole bunch of that happening inside of your television, then you're going to have a picture. And when you have a picture, you can watch TV, you can watch Law and Order, you can watch Smallville. And that's how television works. Thank you for watching Physics, the Everyday Science. Hope you enjoy yourself next time. Bye-bye. Should we wear the same clothes or <laughs> Who was that? Uh. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, okay, ready? Ready? Everybody outside's like, what is this girl doing? Ready? <laughs> Always eating cookies. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Leslie, our narrator for today. Hi. Oh, that's Leslie, our narrator for today. Hi. I can't see you. <laughs> Hello, I'm JD from J Squared. Kayla, Kayla, and T.